Today, we will solve quadratic equations by completing the square and using the quadratic formula. Our essential question is, what relationships exist between completing the square and the quadratic formula? Let's write each quadratic equation in vertex form. First, let's take a look at the b term. We will take half of b and square it. This will give us 8 over 2 squared, which is 4 squared, which is 16. We are, going, we are going to add and subtract 16. When we add and subtract the same number, we are essentially adding 0, which won't change the equation. Now we can see that we have a perfect square trinomial. We will factor that, and that will give us x plus 4 squared. 5 minus 16 is 11. We are in vertex form. Well, let's try a similar one. We will take half of the b term, which is 12, and square it. This will give us 12 over 2 squared. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. We will add and subtract 36. Now we have a perfect square trinomial. Its factored form is x minus 6 squared. 9 minus 36 is negative 27. Now in this case, since the b term is an odd number, it will work slightly different. We'll take half of 9 and square it which will be 9 over 2 squared. 9 over 2 squared is 81 over 4. Therefore, we'll add 81 over 4 and subtract 81 over 4. We have a perfect square trinomial. Its factored form is x plus 9 over 2 squared. Now, on the right-hand side, 4, we need it to have the same denominator as 81 over 4. So we're going to take 4 and multiply top and bottom by 4, since the denominator of 81 over 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, so it's 16 over 4. So we'll rewrite this as plus 16 over 4 minus 81 over 4. 16 minus 81, 4. Let's try one similar to this previous one. We'll take half of the b term and square it, which will give us 3 over 2 squared, which is 9 over 4. We'll add 9 over 4 and subtract 9 over 4. We have a perfect square trinomial. Its factored form is x plus 3 over 2 squared. We'll need 8 and 9 fourths to have the same denominator. So we're going to take the 8, multiply top and bottom by 4, and we get 32 over 4. So 32 over 4 minus 9 over 4 is 23 over 4. The next part of this lesson is solving quadratic equation by completing the square. There are seven steps. Step number one, divide through by a. Step number two, Write the equation in the form x squared plus bx is equal to c. Step number three, take half of b and square it. Step number four, complete the square by adding half of b squared to both sides of the equation. Step number five, factor the perfect square trinomial. Step number six, take the square root of both sides. And our final step, write two equations using both positive and negative roots and solve each equation. Let's follow the steps. First, we'll divide through by a. Second, we will write it in the form x squared plus bx is equal to c by subtracting 3 from both sides. Next, we'll take half of b and square it. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. And we'll add that to both sides. Step number 5, factor the perfect square trinomial. Step number 6, take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of the left-hand side, we're left with the absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 1. Most people will skip this step. So you can go straight to here and take the square root of both sides. You're left with x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus 1. Now, all we have to do is subtract 2 from both sides, and we have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 1. Step number 7 says to write two answers. Our two answers are negative 2 plus 1 or negative 2 minus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Step number 1, divide through by a. Step number 2, we will write the equation in the form x squared plus bx is equal to c by subtracting 5 over 2 from both sides. Step number 3, we'll take half of b and square it, which will give us 7 over 4 squared, which is 49 over 16, and add it to both sides. Now we need to make sure that 5 over 2 and 49 over 16 have the same denominator, so we can subtract. We'll take 5 over 2, multiply it by 8 over 8. This will give me 40 over 16. 
we have the same denominator, so we can subtract. So on the left hand side, when we factor it, we get x plus 7 over 4 squared is equal to 49 over 16 minus 40 over 16 is 9 over 16. And again, how did we get 7 over 4? We're taking the square root of this guy. The square root of 49 is 7, the square root of 16 is 4. We'll take the square root of both sides. I have the absolute value of x plus 7 over 4 is equal to 3 fourths. And again, a lot of people skip this step. They go straight down and say x plus 7 over 4 is equal to plus or minus 3 fourths. We'll subtract 7 fourths from both sides. We're left with x is equal to negative 7 over 4 plus or minus 3 fourths, which is x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 3 all over 4. Since we have the same denominator, we can combine the numerator. X is equal to negative 7 plus 3 over 4, or X is equal to negative 7 minus 3 over 4, which is negative 4 over 4, or negative 10 fourths. And when we reduce this, we get negative 1, or negative 5 over 2. Let's try the next one. You may want to pause the video and see if you can do it yourself. I'm starting now. First, we'll divide through by a, which is 4. Then we'll write the equation in the form of x squared plus bx is equal to c by adding 7 fourths to both sides. Next, we'll take half of the b term and square it, which is 3 over 8 squared, which is 9 over 64. We'll add that to both sides. Now, on the left-hand side, we know we have a perfect square trinomial, which we can factor. On the right-hand side, we want to make sure we have the same denominator. Therefore, we'll take 7 over 4, multiply by top and bottom by, multiply top and bottom by 16. We're left with 112 over 64. On the left-hand side, when we factor it, we are left with x plus 3 8 squared. On the right-hand side, 9 plus 112 is 121. We'll take the square root of both sides. We're left with the absolute value of x plus 3 eighths is equal to 11 eighths. And remember, this step is skipped. We're going straight down. x plus 3 eighths is equal to plus or minus 11 over 8. Subtract 3 eighths from both sides. x is equal to negative 3 eighths plus or minus 11 eighths, which is negative 3 plus or minus 11 over 8. Where you have two answers. You have x equals negative 3 plus 11 over 8, or x is equal to negative 3 minus 11 over 8, which is 8 over 8, or negative 14 over 8, which is 1, or negative 7 fourths. Let's solve by completing the square. First step, we'll divide through by a. We'll write the equation in the form of x squared plus bx is equal to c by adding 2 to both sides. Next, we'll take half of the b term and square it. This leaves us with 81 over 16. We'll add that to both sides. Now on the left-hand side, we have a perfect square trinomial. On the, on the right-hand side, we need to have common denominators with the 2 and the 81 over 16. We'll rewrite the 2 as 2 over 1 and multiply the top and bottom by 16. This will leave us with 32 over 16. Now we can factor the left-hand side as the quantity x plus 9 over 4 squared. On the right-hand side, we can combine our numerators. Now take the square root of both sides. This leaves them with the absolute value of x plus 9 fourths is equal to the square root of 113 over 4. We can find the square root of 16, which is 4. So the radical is only over the 113, not the entire fraction. You may skip this step and go straight down and say x plus 9 over 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 113 over 4. We'll subtract 9 fourths from both sides. This would leave me with x is equal to 9 fourths plus or minus the square root of 113 over 4. Remember, you have two answers. You have negative 9 plus the square root of 113 over 4 or negative 9 minus the square root of 113 over 4. Let's solve by factoring. Step number one, divide through by a. Step number two, we're going to write this in the form of x squared plus bx is equal to c by subtracting one third from both sides. Now we'll take half of the b term and square it. This will leave us with 49 over 36. We'll add that to both sides. The left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial. On the right-hand side, to add, in order to do so, we need to have a common denominator with the 1 third and the 49 over 36. To do this, we will take the 1 third and multiply top and bottom by 12. This leaves us with 12 over 36. 
the left hand side could be factored x plus 7 over 6 squared and on the right hand side 49 36 minus 12 36 is 37 36. Now we'll take the square root of both sides. This will leave me with x plus 7 6 is equal to plus or minus radical 37 over 6. We'll subtract 7 6 from both sides. This will give me x is equal to negative 7 6 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 6. Remember, we have two answers, negative 7 plus square root of 37 over 6, or negative 7 minus 37 over 6. Let's try completing the square when we only have variables. So step number one was to divide through by a, so we'll do that. Step number two was to write it in the form of x squared plus bx is equal to c. In this case, our c is c over a, so we'll subtract that from both sides. And our b is b over a. Now we'll have to take half of our b term and square it. This would leave us with b squared over 4a squared. This 2 is raising these exponents to the second power. Therefore, we distribute. We multiply the exponent outside times each of these exponents. 2 times 1 is 2, so we have b squared. 2 times 1 again is 2, so we have 2 squared. And then 2 times 1 is 2, so we have a squared. 2 squared is 4. We'll add that to both sides. The left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial. On the right-hand side, we need to have common denominator with the c over a and the b squared over 4a squared. But we'll take the ca. Since the b over squared over 4a has a squared, we'll have to multiply the top and bottom by 4a. c times 4a is 4ac. We want to write in alphabetical order. And a times a is a squared. So now we have the same denominator. The left-hand side can be factored. The quantity x plus b over 2a squared is equal to, and we can write the right-hand side over one denominator. So b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now we'll take the square root of both sides. This will leave me with x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Subtract b over 2a from both sides, which is equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is our quadratic formula. When solving quadratic equations, you can use the quadratic formula instead of completing the square. This is an easier method because all all you have to do is have the equation in standard form and then just substitute your value. First you'll substitute the b's, then you'll substitute the a's, and then you'll substitute the c's. So let's take a look at it. In this particular case, b is 8, a is 2, and c is 6. Now we simplify. 8 squared is 64, and negative 4 times 2 times 6 is minus 48. 64 minus 48 is 16, is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. We have negative 8 plus or minus 4 all over 4, which can be written as negative 8 plus 4 over 4 or negative 8 minus 4 over 4. Therefore, x is equal to negative 4 over 4 or negative 12 over 4, which is negative 1 or negative 3. b is 4, a is 5, and c is negative 2. Now let's simplify. 4 squared is 16 and negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, and negative 20 times negative 2 is a positive 40. 16 plus 40 is 56. Always take a close look at the square root of 56, because a perfect square that can be factored out of 56 is 4. We can write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 14. The square root of 4 is 2. It's equal to negative 4 plus or minus 2, radical 14, all over 10. When all three of these terms are divisible by the same number, we have to simplify it further. Therefore, this would be 2 plus or minus 1 times radical 14 all over 5. And remember, we don't need the 1, so it's just 2 plus or minus radical 14 over 5. Sometimes, let's say instead of this one being a 2, it was a 3. This won't work. It cannot be a number underneath the radical. It has to be these three. The all three of these numbers have to have a common factor in order to simplify it further. 
if all three do not have a common factor, you are finished. So again, if this was the case, this is your answer and you do not have to factor it further, just write the two different cases. Now, since all three of these numbers are divisible by the same number, two, you can simplify it. And now you can write our two cases, negative two plus radical 14 over five or negative two minus radical 14 over five. Let's try one more. When using the quadratic formula in this case, we can see that our equation is in standard form. Therefore, when we plug in, b is nine, a is two, and c is negative four. We can simplify the radicand as 81 plus 32. Since nine squared is 81, a negative times a negative is a positive. Four times two is eight, eight times four is 32. 81 plus 32 is 113. And in this case, 113, there are no perfect squares that divides 113 evenly. So now we can just write our two cases, negative eight plus radical 113 over four or negative eight minus radical 113 over four. Let's listen to a song that may help you remember the quadratic formula. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. X is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And notice over 500,000 views. That means a lot of students are watching this. It's very common and that should help you remember. And check this out, 100 digits of pi. And that's a song too. That's pretty cool. All right, have a great day. Bye.